All right, welcome to podcast number three. This is Tweester. And Daniela. And today we're going to be talking about hauntings and ghost stories. Mm. And yeah, we've got a few down. Um, a little bit of a nice spread here that we're going to talk about and just kind of go off on rants and stuff. Uh, Daniela and I both really love hauntings and ghost stories. Yeah, I pretty much am fascinated by all things supernatural. Whether or not you believe in that stuff really doesn't matter. I mean, but you can't deny how intriguing the subject is all around. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, whether I think something has much credence or not has no like no bearing yeah. on how cool I think the ghost story is. Because, like, folklore is just cool. Yeah, and, I mean, it goes back to you know the beginning of our existence like there's across all cultures everybody has their own tales and supernatural stories and some of them intertwine yeah it's crazy how some of them can be from completely different civilizations completely different countries peoples different languages and like they have like kind of a similar striking similarities yeah Yeah. similar ghost stories it's kind of weird you know yeah absolutely um but before we get started, I do want to just say uh, I do have a bit of a squeaky chair here, so it can add maybe a a nice element of spook. And there's a dog the in here. Maybe yes, bark. so that too. Yeah. You, you, you probably won't. It's mostly the chair. I'm I'm thinking. Yeah, probably mostly the chair. But uh, all right, you want to get started? Is there one in particular you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about the Thomas House Hotel. Um, this hotel is in Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. And this is a place you can actually go stay the night at. Um, I think it's like three or four hundred dollars to stay there for a night, and they actually provide you with paranormal research equipment, cameras, EMF readers. You can set it all up in your room. You can walk the grounds and do whatever you want through the night. Um, I actually saw online about a month and a half ago because I'm interested in going there. I actually want to do that at some point. Um, So I keep up with it. I saw where a guest who had their camera set up and everything, they didn't see the ghost themselves, but they caught on their camera um, a little girl in their doorway. And there is um, a lot of stories about uh, this little girl that people hear playing or laughing at night. So, and they actually caught this thing. Um, you can look it up online. It's on Facebook. It's probably on their website right now, but... Do they have any idea, like, who the little girl, girl well, is? there is documented case that a child drowned in the swimming pool there. Um, there are a few documented cases of people dying on the property. A guy fell off his horse on the bridge going back to the property and died in the stream. Um, people have actually heard loud crashes as if somebody crashed their car into the building and could actually hear bricks falling, um, but nothing's ever found out of place. So, like, you said a guy on horseback. Is that a pretty old hotel? Uh, yeah, it was built in 1890 by the Cloyd family, um, but it was last owned and operated before the people who owned it now who are operating it as a, a supernatural hotel where you can go and tour and all of that it was last owned by a cult who specialized in contacting the afterlife okay good so like maybe it was just a place that some like creepy weird stuff happened and maybe it would have been okay but then this cult comes in and they just really kind of they fuck up the, the spirits yeah they're like this is a great place to set up shop <laughs> yep pretty much and so like maybe it wouldn't have been maybe it wouldn't have been a haunted place before but the cult like came and did some rituals and made sure yeah um and, and I couldn't find whether or not the child who died in the swimming pool was a girl or not, but I'm guessing, I mean, that's pretty likely if it's a girl that they hear and they don't ever hear a little boy or something, maybe that was a little girl that drowned there. But at the same time, like, depending on how old that ghost is supposed to be, I mean, we're talking like the 1800s, right? Yeah. Where a lot of times, like, when they're really young, girls and Mm -hmm. boys are kind of dressed the same, had similar haircuts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not like their voices are going to be any different, so... Yeah, I mean, if a little boy had a high-pitched voice... Yeah, anything's possible. It's possible. Um, So, actually, I mean, if you're interested, if anybody's interested in going to do this, and you might actually go stay the night there, room 37 is said to be the most haunted room where the most activity occurs, so... You should stay in that room if you're really into it and you want to have something happen. Um, that's probably your best bet. 
But have you noticed how there's always a creepy child ghost? In yes. almost everything, there's a child involved. You hear child, you hear children giggling, or you see a bouncing ball. I mean, there's almost always a, a creepy ghost child. Yeah, I think it maybe it's uh, you know, maybe it's the whole thing <laughs> of like kids, like ghost kids, really scare people because they're supposed to like kids are supposed to be non-threatening and sweet and innocent. Yeah, and then a ghost kid is just the complete flip of that. Like, yeah. they're just, there's something very wrong with them, and it's like a, how, how do you say, um, ah, damn it, the word is leaving me right now. <laughs> um, but basically, when you take something good and you turn it bad. Yeah, I mean, well. A cor- like, a certain corruption of that innocence. Right, and, and there's that. just something so naturally sinister about child's laughter when the child isn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when there's no one making them laugh. Yeah, or, you know, just people who are sitting somewhere and there's no children around and you hear children laughing, and for some reason it's just naturally creepy. Maybe a ghost child doesn't understand things the way a regular child would, and so to them, like, you being haunted is like a game to them. Yeah, I mean... It like, they be. don't understand that they're haunting you and scaring you. They're just like, oh, this is what I do now. Yeah, I mean, that's just their existence. <laughs> yeah, it could be. So yeah, anybody who's who's interested in doing that, Thomas House Hotel, Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. You can go on their website and see how to book a room and all of that. You know, at first I thought three hundred dollars sounded like a lot to stay the night, but when you talk about all the equipment that they let you borrow, yeah. that's like all the renting, all the mm-hmm. rental fees and stuff for that. It kind of works out. And I think they feed you at certain points too. So okay. I think that's like inclusive. It's like full service. Yeah. Okay. In that case, it makes the price. Not ridiculous. Well, and part of it is like, you know, if they let people have free reign of the hotel and go roam around by themselves, it's not like a guided tour thing. Mm-hmm. So they have to account for some things going wrong. <laughs> you know, not everybody's responsible. Dropping yeah. lambs, pictures falling off the wall, that kind yeah. of stuff. Or people trying to creep each other out and destroy things. Here's the thing. If I went to that ghost tour, right, and I was, you know, just bumbling around in the middle of the night with all my EM gear and all that stuff... And I knocked over a lamp. Yeah. And I came to them and I said, while I was out, a ghost knocked over a lamp. <laughs> Do you think they would charge me? And like, if they did, could I be like, what? You know this place is haunted. How could you charge me for Who this? Knows? I guess it depends on the people. Or maybe there. like, so they don't have to do that. There's already like, basically they include that in the rate. They're like, and then we'll add a small breakage fee. Like if we add a small breakage fee to everyone, no one will really care, but whenever breaks do happen we kind of have that covered yeah they have a cushion for it instead of like each individual person pays right but yeah it's really not that bad i mean if you consider other hotel prices where you're only staying the night there and you're not having this experience yeah you can already pay like 150 bucks just to stay the night somewhere with no rental gear and no food involved and there's a market for it so it would be kind of dumb for them to not take advantage of that yeah exactly i mean the, this place gets booked up through the season that it's open and does this. Like it, it gets completely booked up. Well, while we're talking about Tennessee, I actually had a a place I wanted to talk about. Um, I really love Civil War stuff. Yeah, and me too. So there's a lot of like kind of ghost stories surrounding the Civil War, but there's one place you can go to with lots of Civil War ghosts, or apparently a lot of reported Civil War ghosts. Um, Shiloh. If you go to the Shiloh National Park in Tennessee, the Battle of Shiloh is one of the biggest and bloodiest battles in all of the Civil War. They, they spent two days fighting. Thousands of men died. Um, they, they battled in the fields. And a lot of them, actually, after big bouts of fighting, after a lot of people died, they kind of, like, ran off into the woods to, like, kind of... Both sides did. They ran right. off into the woods to, like, kind of a, a, escape being shot at for a while or like you know go lick their wounds and stuff but while they're in the woods sometimes people would bump into each other and they would end up still fighting so it was like a never-ending fight for two days yeah just just two cr- days straight of them crazy bloody yeah, yeah crazy bloody there was one huge pond um that was on the land and so that was the water that everyone would go to use yeah and people ended up dying in the pond like, horses and soldiers alike would die in the pond. Right. Kind of, like, filling it with blood. So the pond was just filled with blood, and that's the only 
pond that people could use. So they were like <laughs> mm, drinking bloody water. <laughs> yeah. So it's just really like, can you imagine how horrifying that battle would be? Like, it seems like you can't escape anywhere. There's, no. you know, there's people everywhere. And your everywhere. life source is full of death. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. And even when you go to take a drink of water, there's just blood everywhere. Like, that's a very biblical kind of kind of look for it, you know? Just yeah, one mean, of the plagues. You feel like you're being plagued. Imagine the devastating effects of that and the residual energy, if you believe in that stuff, the residual energy that would be left over from um, an event like that. I'm sure that people got serious PS, um, PTSD, PTSD from that. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure some people probably went insane. I mean, you you Most hear about likely. people going insane on the battlefield all the time, just in like normal battles. So imagine something like this, like taking that for two days and then just breaking you, you know? Well, yeah, not only seeing people die bloody deaths, but then like ingesting other people's blood. That has to take a toll on your mind and body, you know? Yeah. And so it's a very visited national park. Is it well known that this place w- uh, had such a crazy event like this happen i mean do people do a lot of people in the area know that it's haunted oh yeah yeah to be haunted oh yeah okay yeah and you know a lot of people go there just for um just for the purpose of it is one of like the big famous civil war battles yeah in the whole country um but when they get there they always end up here. Like, yeah, if they didn't know it before, that. they learn about it while they're there because a lot of visitors have reported things. Like, um, there have been a lot of reports from people who were just day in and day out visiting, you know. It is, it, there doesn't seem to be a specific, like, time of day. It's not like some places where when the sun goes down, then everything gets creepy. Right. Like, people are talking about middle of the day, sometimes weird things will happen. Phantom gunshots, cannon fire... Uh, there are people that thought there were reenactments going on nearby. Yeah. And they so go to look for them. So a lot of the them. stuff that happens at Gettysburg also. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. people thought there were reenactments and stuff happening, and they they go to find one, and there's there's nothing there. And they ask, and they're like, what are you talking about? There's no reenactments. Yeah. And they swore they heard gunshots and cannon fire. Um, people also, uh, a few people have also reported hearing drums playing. Right. Like, because, you know, back then they would play drums. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently there is a specific little boy who was a drum player in that battle. Of course, who, there's who a died. child. <laughs> yeah, who did die. And so people, like, after, you know, a bunch of reports, people think that it's that little boy playing the drums in the yeah. battle. Kind of just all over the battlefield. Uh, even the rangers who stay there in, like, the ranger cabin... Mm-hmm. They report uh, doors opening and closing on their on their own, windows opening and closing on their own. Uh, sometimes they just hear noises like around, like kind of like um, banging on the outside or the roof or just little things like that, almost like poltergeisty. Yeah. You know, in the cabin. Um, so even the rangers who are just there to do a specific job and aren't there for. Um, they're not there for the tourism. Yeah, they're they're there right. to work, but they're like there some for a of them. Job and they they even say that they've had these experiences. Yes, yes. Uh, we talked about the bloody pond earlier. There's some people who swore that when they walked by the pond, it looked red. Like yeah. sometimes they'll look at it for a second, and it'll look red, and they'll like you know like maybe shake their head or you know like you do you blink a couple times, you go mm-hmm. what the fuck, and they look back and nothing. See, and I wonder though how many of those people know about the story. Um, enough and know about the bloody river um, because then maybe the it's their mind doing it to them but if some of those people didn't know about it and they say that it would seem more legitimate like actually creeped out maybe like uh, you assume if they're going on a tour of Shiloh anyways that they they're going to learn about this stuff yeah. if they didn't know it before but some might say that when you um, when you open yourself up to that kind of stuff that's when you're going to yeah when you're experience more receptive it. to whereas it. like if you're blocking it off like you know they say it's like some hauntings are very aggressive and it's like it doesn't matter whether you're ready for it or you're thinking about it or you believe it or not like it'll yeah. it'll just like force you to yeah. see itself or hear something right but then there are other ones that are kind of require you to be open you to have it. to be open to yeah. it and when you open yourself up then you can kind of like feel that all that around right. you and see things um and yeah, and people have reported like uh, I I read one thing about like a couple people saying they went to go take pictures, yeah. And when they went to take pictures, like when they looked through the lens, 
all of a sudden the pond was like blood red yeah. and they like looked like looked back up they like took the camera back down and looked up and it was fine again mm-hmm. and, you know and of course they try to put the lens back up and then it's gone like it's not there anymore but can you just imagine just oh, like yeah i mean that's something that you would see in a movie and part of the reason for that is because those are things that people actually experience and say that they've experienced can you imagine like you're a parent and you go there and you just want to take a nice picture and your kids are playing in the pond <laughs> you, <laughs> you see them playing in bloody blood water. you're like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely family vacation yeah right wonderful memories. shiloh guys go to it uh, a couple other things. We mentioned pictures before. There are a lot of this, and you can look up some of them online where people have reported, um, and they even, like, some of, sometimes they'll, like, post their little pictures and stuff yeah. of people taking pictures, and there will be a white blur where there wasn't one before. So, like, they'll take pictures of, like, a statue or a certain area, and they just see kind of like a, like a white blur or shadow mm-hmm. somewhere in the background around. Um, the woods that we said before, like, a lot of people ran into the woods to kind of escape the battle. Right. Some people reported hearing screaming and moaning when they got near the woods. Yeah, basically sounds of people dying. Yeah, just coming from every direction. Um, and there's there's another cabin. Uh, I forget the name of the cabin. There's another cabin in Shiloh where a lot of people have, res- have specifically reported seeing a little boy. Yeah. When they get close to the cabin, he, like, runs down a ladder and runs away and disappears and they said he's wearing like a white shirt and like gray pants like maybe a confederate yeah but like a little, little boy. boy yeah but like apparently there were a lot of kids in the battle okay and so oh maybe it is the little drummer boy maybe it's the same one could be the, but they never reported him having a drum but that's because he's running down a ladder so yeah uh, so can you camp in a Charlotte national Park? i don't believe you can okay which might be for the best. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's hard enough when people spend the night somewhere where it's like, hey, spend the night in this building. There are like a couple ghosts. Yeah. You're going to stay the night but somewhere an entire where wilderness full thousands of, yeah. of people died and like that's right. where their bodies were laid to rest. And yeah. Yeah. Maybe for the best. Maybe. I mean, if the rangers themselves are like, shit's kind of fucked up here, then, you know, they probably have a hard enough time spending the night sometimes. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I wonder if they get creeped out. But speaking of thousands of people dying, um, oh, good. I want to talk about <laughs> uh, Weston State Hospital in West Virginia. Um, so this is an insane asylum that, I mean, many people, probably a lot of people listening to this would have already heard about, um, uh, where thousands of people died. I mean, this place was only designed to house originally like 250 patients in privacy and comfort. And by the 1950s, it hit its peak with, you know, 2,600 patients there. Jesus. I mean, full of people. Um, and so this place is, you, you might have seen American Horror Story Asylum. And if, you, if you've seen that and then you just do some basic research on Western State Hospital... You'll see a lot of the connections there, I think, that they drew from the history of this place. Um, because this this place had, first of all, there was the doctor in American Horror Story who did lobotomies. And there was a doctor at Weston State Hospital, Dr. Walter Freeman. He was their most notorious doctor. And just, just during a two-week period, he performed 228 lobotomies. How did he get a license? Like, I feel like he got a license just to torture people. Now, they say, you know, they started doing lobotomies to control the population of this hospital because, you know, they, they said it helped people, that it uh, sort of eased the more intense systems, it reduced them. But really, I think this guy was just a butcher and he just liked doing lobotomies. You can't do 228 lobotomies in a two-week period and not enjoy it. Otherwise, that would kind of, that would probably drive someone insane. Well, like, the thing, too, is that he's doing that many every week, right? So then weeks after that, he's also seeing all the people he just previously lobotomized and yeah, seeing that seeing they're, the like, not better, that they're just, like, oh, yeah. zombies so wandering around. And he's still doing it. He's like, Absolutely. this clearly this isn't working because I can see it's not working. Like, oh, they're calmer, but they're also not doing anything else. Yeah, it was named Operation Ice Pick, and it became his legacy. I mean, this guy was brutal. Um, so this is another place where you can actually go tour. It has daily tours. 
Um, I'm not sure the extent. I, I know they're guided tours, um, but this is a place where you can go at night. There's an eight hour all night paranormal investigation tour. And I mean, you can go with a group of your friends. You could probably just go with one other person, just you and one other person, and go there all night and get to explore the place uh, with cameras and EMF readers and all that. So if you're brave enough and you want to check that out, that could be a pretty interesting experience. I think that's probably the best way to do that, something like that, is to not bring a big group of people, like, like maybe a group of three tops. Yeah, maybe. There's three of you, or maybe maybe four is okay too, but like you don't want a big group because that's going to um, kind of take away from the experience, I think. Yeah. And also because like ghosts don't like crowds. Everyone knows ghosts don't like crowds. Yeah, I think it would definitely be creepier with just a few people at a time. And like if I went some with some friends, I would be like Fred from Scooby Doo. I'd just be like, let's split up, gang, and they'd be like, no. Yeah. But that's how, that's what you got to <laughs> do if you want to see something. I'm like, do you want your money's worth or not? Like. Right. But, I mean, this is supposed to be one of the most haunted places, definitely in America, possibly the world. Thousands of people died there. I mean, and most people there were living in poor living conditions. They, I mean, it's just a horrible, horrible place to be. Um, They also had, eventually, they had to open a tuberculosis hospital connected on the property because tuberculosis was so contagious and such a devastating disease um, that they had to keep those people separate. Um, Which brings me to Waverly Hills Sanitarium. Um, And I want to get into this because I think American Horror Story Asylum also drew from part of Waverly Hills Sanitarium. um, Just a quick sidebar. Yeah. Um, The Asane Asylum with the tuberculosis ward and everything. Do they say what you're more likely to see like do people report more seeing like patients or dr death mr oh, ice they see everything okay they see nurses who have killed themselves there i think there's one nurse who hung herself due to a, a, an unwanted pregnancy um and there was another nurse who jumped off the roof and committed suicide so even the doctors and nurses were dying so you're seeing like Patients who are like you seeing like insane patients, probably lobotomized patients, nurses like the staff who started committing suicide, and but did Mister Ice Pick has, has anyone ever reported seeing him on the property, or did he just die somewhere so completely different? That I don't he know would... if anyone's ever reported seeing him. There has been this entity, and I say entity because it's kind of more like a creature than a person. There's been this thing that people have reported seeing climbing the walls. So it's like something straight out of a horror movie. Something this really sinister feeling that they don't, like, a lot of times some of the people who report seeing ghosts, they're like, oh, I can tell this thing is human, was human at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, this thing, it's not the case. It seems like, like I said, like just some kind of evil entity. Um, so that one is really creepy. I wonder if that'd be like justice for, yeah. like maybe, in the afterlife because of all of his deeds they're like now you're going to be a creature and you're going to haunt the place where you did all this damage yeah and like he's climbing you're gonna the walls you're going to be the creature you were already in yeah your like you're going to look life. on the outside in ghostly form the way yeah. that you were on the inside yeah and there's also been i think you know people have seen footsteps like like as if somebody's stepping in a puddle and they are walking through the hall they see water footsteps Going through the hallway when there's nobody there. It'd be just my luck that I would go there with, like, three other people. I would say, let's split up, gang. Yeah. they listen to me, and then I would be the one to, like, run into the ice pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would be the one to run into him, like, climbing the walls, popping, locking down the hallway. Just, You're like, no, don't like, bottom Damn me. it. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, really made a mistake there. Well, I assume that this, if this is a tour kind of haunting, then these aren't the type of entities that, like, can hurt you. They're more of, like... They're there, you see them, you get scared shitless. I don't know, you enter at your own risk. Plus, I mean, if somebody were to be hurt, I don't know how heavily reported it would be. Right. Because another part about, another part of the history of Western State is that um, the they depended on the state to supply them with things that they needed. And it, in return, the state depended on them for to, because it boosted the economy. Like, after this closed, it closed for a while, 
Um, it was almost condemned at one point before they reopened it for tours. But after this closed, it devastated the economy. So now that it's helping the economy again, I don't know how... Like I don't know, oh, yeah, like, how eager they would be. To it's making money. That. We can't get it shut down. Yeah, like, <laughs> we can't tell people. But but okay, maybe I would say more of like it could be things like, you know, you've heard of people getting pushed down, you know, a small flight of stairs mm-hmm. or like knocked into something. Maybe it's small stuff like that because if people got straight up ghost lobotomized, I don't think there's too much you could do to hide that. Yeah. Well, one kid. I think there's a, a couple kids up on the roof messing around and something creeped them out to the point where one kid almost jumped off of the roof to get away. So he almost committed suicide. Just I think to get away from his friends like thing. stopped him. But so that could have been a potential casualty, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if stuff like that happens all the time. That's close then. That's close. Maybe you shouldn't go there if you're sensitive to, <laughs> to being that frightened. Um Yeah, but then you're the most likely to get to see something. <laughs> yeah, so maybe. it's a double-edged sword. I yeah, don't know. Catch-22. You just got to have one, like, person that can, uh... You need, to, you need to go there with someone who can, like, help snap you back. Yeah. And you need to, like, tell them to give you some space. So maybe you get to walk up on one floor, you got a walkie, and they're on another. And then when some shit goes down, you're like, okay, I'm ready! Yeah. <laughs> and then you, like, they run up there and dispel. The ghost just dispel. Yeah. They never see it happen. No, of course not. Oh, there's also a little girl there, and this is kind of sad, this little girl, Lily, she actually has a name, um, was born there, or supposedly born there, I don't know if that part is like a def- uh, definitive or not. By one of the not. patients, huh? Uh, yeah, by a woman who was raped, so she was a product of that. It already um, starts bad, okay. Yeah, so Lily, she didn't live very long, she died really young there, um, and... It is said, you know, people who work there and all that say that they hear her all the time laughing and that there's a room, her room, that's still there. It's painted yellow and it has a bunch of toys all over the floor and they see the toys move around and the ball bouncing towards them like she wants them to play there with them. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a sad story. Um, So you might hear or see Lily if you're there also. Um, but back to what I was going to talk about related to the asylum is a sanitarium in Louisville, Kentucky, Waverly Hills. Uh, it's a tuberculosis hospital, opened in 1910. Um, this is another place that was designed originally to just accommodate about 40 to 50 people. Um, but tuberculosis became so widespread and so, it's like basically an epidemic in Jefferson County that eventually they had to build onto it and it held about 400 people. A lot of people died here because tuberculosis at the time was something that you didn't usually walk away from. Most people who went to this place died there. And the connection I was gonna talk about earlier with uh, Asylum for American Horror Story is this is the place that had the body shoot, the tunnel where they would have to wheelbarrow out dead bodies so that other patients wouldn't see them. I mean, because they had that many people dying there constantly. I mean, just an awful place. I'm sure their reputation preceded it. Like, I'm sure at some point people knew, hey, if I'm getting taken to the to the tuberculosis hospital, I'm going to die there. Yeah. Because, you know, whether you see the bodies or not, you're not seeing people leave. Yeah. I mean. So, like, you've you've already gone in with bad juju. And you have that many people going in, like, already with all this, like, negative, uh, kind of negative emotion and stuff. And then they just live out their last days in this terrible hospital. And then they get dropped down a chute. Right. And the death. people who have tuberculosis and are going into that hospital pretty much already knew how it went. They already knew from the beginning that they probably weren't going to leave there alive. Yeah. It was more like, I'll, I'll go here so that I don't make all of my family's, family and friends sick, too. Yeah, so the energy in that place is just all around terrible. I mean, yeah. there's really nobody in there who's happy, do they do, do you do tours there, too? Yeah, they do a guided tours as well. Um, yeah, it's in Louisville, Kentucky, so you could go there and do... I think they only do daytime tours. I don't think they do any at night. Not that I've seen, at least. Perfect. So, yeah. sneak in at night is what you're telling me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to see something. 
Pretty much. Or they um, just find like my mangled, scared body on the ground, and they're like, "God damn it, another one." Yeah, room five hundred two is what you want to go to. That is where two nurses killed themselves. Also, I'm I don't, not sure what the reasons were. Do you know how? No, I'm not sure how they killed themselves, but room five hundred two is supposed to be incredibly haunted. Maybe that was the beginning of the haunting. Like maybe it started to become haunted while it was still open and operating Mm -hmm. and like 502 became haunted two nurses go in there and a ghost or entity yeah just just makes them kill themselves right and like that was the beginning of the end for that place yeah i mean and like even though this place only held later on like 400 people it was open it was an active open tuberculosis hospital from 1910 to 1961 like they, there Damn. wasn't a cure for tuber- tuberculosis until 1961. So people were dying there constantly from 1910 to 1961. That's why this place is supposed to be incredibly Super haunted. Super haunted, yeah. Yeah. Tons of death. Piles tons of, of bodies. bad energy. Right. Yeah, piles and piles of bodies. Because you know that's another thing. A lot of people, like a lot of cultures, um, believe that not having a good funeral or a good service to lay the body to rest which is supposed to also lay the spirit to rest, is mm-hmm. what causes hauntings. Yeah. And causes ghosts. And so, like, if that's true, then a place like this would just be rife with them. Well, and there were also horrible experiments being done on the patients um, because there really was not much you could do for them. So, you know, the doctors there would kind of take things into their own hands sometimes and be like, well, let's try this, so let's try this. And most of the time, they were terrible, horrible, excruciating experiments. I think one of them was, um, since they had a hard time breathing, that there's one doctor who would put a balloon in their lungs and try to fill it up with air. And it was supposed to be, like, incredibly painful, never actually worked. They, I mean, they just did all kinds of experiments like that that basically were just torturing the patients with no real results. So, I mean, these people are already miserable. They're dying. They're suffering. And then people are doing experiments on them and making them suffer even more. So it's like definitely a place with crazy energy, it's I'm sure. Crazy bad history there. Right. You know, I, I, I'm, I kind of like heard some of this secondhand. So I'm not quite, you know what, I'm sure everyone heard this secondhand, unless they're the person that researched it. Yeah. But tuberculosis, um, I think that our quote-unquote cure for tuberculosis actually just staves it off for most of your life. Like, I think you take something and you it, it like, basically holds it at bay. Yeah, it's an antibiotic, but I don't think it actually, I think it lays dormant I don't yeah it lays think dormant you ever get rid of it. and if you and I think the <laughs> hope is that like you know you eventually die of natural causes of like something else yeah because if you live long enough I think eventually like I think it only holds it off for so long but like when you if you get too old yeah then eventually it like the tuberculosis is what kills you right yeah maybe which um, really sucks I actually have a friend whose grandmother was in a tuberculosis hospital when she was a kid, Mm -hmm. and she will not talk about it at all. Really? Like, I don't think he even knew for the longest time until he was, like, an adult. Um, Did she tell him, or did he just find out, and she's like, nope, not talking about it? I think his mom told him. Okay. And, like, you can't even bring it up to her, she won't talk about it. I think her mom died there. Oh, really? Um, And she was, like, seven or something, and she got out. I mean, I think she actually ended up I mean she obviously ended up being fine but I'm not sure if she was there because she I mean she was probably sick with tuberculosis otherwise she wouldn't be there because it was incredibly contagious um but yeah I don't know she just she wouldn't talk about it so I'm sure it was because it was terrible yeah yeah she's like nope (laughs) like I don't want to go down that road she's like there's no reason for me to pass this on to you I'm good I'm gonna keep this one yeah probably and that's fine so I um I have some Mexican hauntings and ghost stories I want to talk about. Sweet. I love me some Mexican lore. Yeah, I do I too. love like Aztec stuff and the Mayan stuff. Oh yeah, it's and fascinating. they definitely have some cool ones. Um, I'll start off with an Aztec one. Okay. So there's an Aztec one. I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly. Um, Kiwate, no, Kiwateteo. Okay, so okay. the Kiwateteo. I need to say it a couple times before Kiwateteo. I really get it. Kiwateteo. 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 
Okay. Oh no, I'm it's summoning them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't chant. <laughs> don't chant it. Um, so the Kawateteo is supposedly it's Aztec women who died during childbirth. Yeah. They believe that these Aztec women who died during, died during childbirth were so distraught that they would haunt crossroads, like in different parts of Mexico, mm-hmm. and try to steal children. Okay, so... And, but, like, here's where, like, it gets, you know, even worse. Like, it's already bad enough that they're stealing children, but even though they started off sad, because they're now trying to steal children, and that's, like, evil... It makes them bad ghosts. Yeah. So then they, like, they... Well, and they are sad because they died without being able to, like, be alive to raise their children. And now they're exactly. stealing other people's children. Now they're looking for children, yeah. So, so like, little... <laughs> they're supposed to have, like, these pale faces. They're, like, these women with these pale faces. Um, probably because they bled out. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, gold earrings. And that might just be an Aztec thing or it might just yeah, be something so. to try to, like, draw someone in, you know, because, like, yeah, gold be. is shiny. And when you see it, you're like, hey, what's well, <laughs> who's that over there? What's yeah. that? Um, and clawed hands. Clawed hands. But the clawed hands you're not going to see until you get close enough. Do we know why they have clawed hands? I think it's just part of the whole they're just starting to look bad yeah. because they're of what they're doing. They're starting to look as malevolent as they're yes. becoming. Yes, yeah. yes, because, um, yeah, because of what they're doing. So they start, they're like sad ghosts who then kind of turn bad. Yeah. Um, and the, But the main thing is surrounding children. Like, they haunt crossroads. If you go to a crossroads at night uh, somewhere in Mexico, if you're just driving through or something, you might see a woman, and you're supposed to not stop. Yeah, when I think of crossroads, I think about summoning spirits or demons. So I wonder right. if people have attempted to do that. Maybe. Yeah. Like going to crossroads on purpose. Can yeah. you imagine? Okay, so you're going to crossroads on purpose because you're going to summon a demon and you're going to be like, I will sell my soul to you for riches. Right. But before that even happens, a Kawatateo <laughs> shows up and she's like, no, you're just going to die for free. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, I don't, you know, I don't know if, okay, so from what I read, the Kawatateos, they don't like hurt people, people. Yeah. Like uh, full grown adults. They go, they just go after children. Yeah. So, like, there are people that have reported, like, towns where children have gone missing, and they've uh, they've said that it's happened because a Coatateo took them. Yeah. Like, the kids went off to play too far from home. Maybe they got near a crossroads. It doesn't always have to be a crossroads. It's just where you're more likely to see them. Okay. But, um, you know, they go off somewhere, and they end up coming upon a Coatateo, and they just steal those kids. So, I wonder if any of these kids have been found later... And their bodies examined to see, like, what kind of damage was done to them. I haven't come, like, I didn't go that far into it. I mostly stuck with the, like, lore reports. I didn't try to go into too many of the uh, specific instances. But I could see, like, a kid showing up kind of with their body kind of mangled or attacked. And some people going, oh, well, this is an animal attack, clearly. But other people going... No, that looks like the clawed hand attack of a Kawatateo yeah. because, like, you know, a coyote only has so much, you know, so much nail. Yeah. So, like, maybe if it's a deep cut, they're like, we don't have any animal like that that's supposed to be around here. Yeah, that can just claw and disembowel you. Yeah, so, like, maybe that's a Kawatateo. And yeah. then everyone's like, shit, all right, kids, there's a curfew now. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's so they, – they also – they're also supposedly supposed to have, uh, like, they'll wear, like – skirts or clothing that's like very bright kind of floral and stuff yeah like you know you know well you know like if you've ever looked at any kind of like aztec inspired uh stuff right. it's very like intricate and very eye-catching yeah and i think that's supposed to be the point of it is that like everything about them is supposed to try to draw you in yeah it's supposed to be seductive in some form. in some form or way and they're i don't know about this one but <laughs> supposedly they're also supposed to um cause bad behavior in some men like they can like if a if a man comes upon one, they can like possess them to do things like go have affairs or go get in fights with people or just like just basically be shitty husbands. But I was like, mm. yeah, you know what? I could also see some guy like getting caught cheating and be like, hey, the Kawata made me <laughs> right, do it. Exactly. <laughs> it's like it just became an excuse. Yeah, like is but you know here's the sad thing. Like, what if there's a town? Let's say 10 men get caught doing shitty stuff, yeah. and they blame a Kawatateo. <laughs> but there's one guy who a Kawatateo actually did make him do it. You're like, no. 
And like he was the first one who claimed it, and the other guys were like, "Oh yeah, that's good." He's like, "No, no, no, it really happened." And they're like, "Yeah, no, sure it did, buddy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're just like, like blaming it. So you're like, like, thanks, guy. That's a good idea. So like maybe people would have believed him, but then they didn't just because there's other shitty people townspeople. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's the uh, the Kawata Teo. It's a uh, Aztec woman who died in childbirth. Very cool. Ooh, very cool. Look into that one more. Yeah, but there's a couple others, and like that's that's kind of the cool thing I like about some of these Mexican ghost stories, is that they're not place specific, they're just reported like all over the country. Right. Like these ghosts don't have to be in one they're one not specific tied place. To, yeah. No, area. they can like well, you know, with the Cuatateo, it's like you're gonna more likely see them in a crossroads. Right. So there are places that draw them more. But they're seen other places. But they too. can be in other places. Yeah. yeah. Um, like one of the most famous ones I've. Almost every Mexican person I've talked to has told me they've heard of this one. La Llorona. Oh, yeah. The Crying Woman. Yes, the Crying Super famous. It doesn't take any research at all to look this up and just to see a ton of stories about the Crying Woman in yeah, Mexico. Yeah, even a lot of Americans now know about La, La Llorona, Llorona, even when you say it in Spanish, because it's become so popular. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of cultures around the world have their version of the woman in white. Right. And That's... La Llorona is the one from Mexico. Exactly. She's a woman in white who, um, th- the stories can kind of kind of change, but the one thing that I always hear is the same is that she drowned her children. Yeah. Right? So she drowned her children. The stories that kind of change are why she did it. Yeah. Um, some people say she fell in love with someone who wanted to, like, some guy who was a real bastard. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I kind of love you, but I want to start my own family. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, be a part of someone else's. And so she drowned her children to try yeah. to, you know, oh, I don't have kids anymore. And then he rejected her, of course, because he's like, that's insane. I haven't heard and- that one. I've heard one where they were sick. So she had to drown them to, you know, relieve them of their suffering. Yeah, see, the, I mean, that's the so thing many. is like the story kind of changes. And yeah. maybe there's, maybe the reason it's so widespread in Mexico is because there's more than one La Llorona. Well, yeah, and if you think about the woman in white or the white lady, you hear about accounts of her all over. I mean, if you're talking about in the United States, it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, hundreds of miles apart. This uh, lady is seen hitchhiking or, you know, drawing people in, getting rides, and then killing them. I mean, there's well, all kinds of stories. La Llorona is going to be, like, different than Our Lady in White in the U.S. Right. Because her specific thing... Um, oh, yeah. But what they have in common is that they're so widespread, they're not confined they're, yes, they're to Yes, they're not confined to just one area. Yeah. No. Um, the specific story that I heard from, like, from mouth to ear, to me was that La Llorona was a woman who drowned her children. Um, and afterwards, she was hanged for her crimes. Yeah. So, like, you know, I've heard versions of her suicide, but the one that I heard specifically from a person yeah. um, that told me this story first was that she was hanged for her crimes, and, like, that's why she got... That's why she's kind of malevolent. Like, yeah. she didn't even, you know, do it to herself. She wasn't even like, oh, no, what have I done? And committed suicide. She was hanged for it, and she was, like, pissed about it. And that's why she's, like, forced to roam the countryside as La Llorona. So, like, it's a crying lady in white. Yeah. And just like the uh, Kiwatateo, she also steals children. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's an extension of that that I've heard was that she will steal children and drown them and then drop them off on their doorstep and leave them there dead. That's one version. Yeah. There's many versions of... Yeah, just leave them there dead. And supposedly, like, she specifically goes after, like, bad children. Yeah. So she goes after children who are, like, little shits, basically. And they're like, oh, you're not you're not minding your mother. Yeah. And, you know, that reminds her of, like, her kids somehow. Or, like, She's I like, oh, well, gotta drown you. <laughs> yeah, so she like, she, like, catches you when you're off by yourself and she drowns you. Um... And other, uh, again, just like the... But see, uh, that part could be, uh, I mean, it's not far-fetched to think that you have, like, a Mexican mother who's like, don't be a bad kid or La Llorona is Oh, yeah, you. oh, you I know mean, they do that. Of course. Yeah, yeah, no, it's totally a boogeyman <laughs> There's thing. There's always a scare tactic involved. There's always a scare tactic. Yeah. But you almost, you also wonder, like, because, like, all the adults who say that, a lot of them heard the same story when they were kids, and then, yeah. like, I bet some part in their life there was a kid who drowned somewhere and they're like oh shit was that La Llorona right you know I actually had a Mexican friend who thought he saw La Llorona and was terrified he said he was in Mexico in the woods 
um, with his friend, and his, he, he got a little bit far apart from his friend, heard his friend scream, looked back and saw her, and then just ran, and I think eventually he found his friend again, but he swears to God it was her, and that he was about to snatch his friend. Yeah, oh, like, some of the stories that I was looking up, there are a lot of people that, like, supposedly they've, they've seen her, yeah. like, there have been sightings of her. And they don't, like, people, a lot of people believe that it was either they barely escaped or it was, like, a warning. Yeah. Like, she showed up and that means, like, there was some kid in town that she might be after or some kid in the neighborhood that she might be after. Right. And it was, like, she's hanging around long enough. Yeah, so if you've seen her, then take that as a a warning. Yeah, that she's there for, like, she's there for a reason. There's someone that she might be thinking about snatching up. Yeah. Um... Either she's waiting for them to be alone because they're just that bad a kid, mm-hmm. <laughs> or she's waiting to see if they straighten up and then she disappears, goes find someone else. Right. But yeah, that one's that one's huge, and that is the one difference that's a, that's the difference between uh, the lady and white kind of uh, thing that we have here in America. Yeah. There are lots of reports of a lady in white, but that's she isn't known for stealing and drowning children. Right. That's specific to Mexico. But they're both supposed to be, like, sad souls. Yes, that, and that's why she's La Llorona. Yeah, she's crying. she's crying like, all that's the, the time. You, you, hear, you her hear her crying, crying yeah. yeah. And you know that she's so, nearby. And... Man, if there's anything that I've learned so far from uh, yeah. Mexican ghosts, it's that you are you just can't approach a crying lady. Yeah, I know. You're just, which is sad, because there's a lot... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that brings me to another one. This one is one that is specifically huge in Mexico City. But it doesn't have to be just Mexico City. But this is where the most reports have happened. Okay. They call her La Planchada. And La Planchada means the ironed lady. Okay? The ironed lady? The ironed lady. Okay. It'll make sense in a second. Okay. okay? Just <laughs> stick with me here. Um, so La Planchada is a nurse that looks like she's, um, she's dressed in nurse gear that looks like it's either from the 40s or 50s. Yeah. That people, patients, have reported seeing in different hospitals. Okay. But this one's different. She is not a malevolent spirit. Mm-hmm. She's not there to hurt people. It's quite the opposite. They say that she shows up, and if she shows up in a patient's room, mm-hmm. then she heals them. And, and the next better. morning they get better. Okay. Yeah. And when the doctors come and ask them, like, how do you feel? Like, what happened? You, you've gotten better very quickly. A lot of people have said, oh, I was visited by a, a nurse last night who helped me. Yeah. And they're like, we didn't have any staff come visit you last night. They're like, got all the reports right here. We have cameras. We have, there's no one came to visit you, and there's nothing that they would come visit you for. It's not like we put you on new medication last yeah, night or anything. Yeah, there's nothing they could have done if they were here. Yeah, and they're like, oh, I guess it was La Planchada. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, but if they, if you know, it's it's dark at night and stuff, yeah. so maybe they didn't notice. But there's some people who have like said they they did notice. They were wearing really old, like she was wearing really old school nurse. Okay, but outfit. we don't know like what her story is or anything. We just there's a know. couple different ones. Okay. Um, but first, I want to say the reason they call her La Planchada, the Iron Lady, mm-hmm. is because her, they say her nurse outfit is immaculate. Okay. Like. She she has everything is perfectly ironed. Not a wrinkle on her. Not anything. a wrinkle on her. And she was like, a, she's just this pristine old nurse. Hmm. Uh, so there's a couple different stories that I have that I were, was able to pull from this of her supposed origin. Yeah. Um, one of them is that she is a nurse who um, was very, you know, she, she was very much uh, proud of what she did. And she was one of the best you know, nurses in the hospital that she worked in and she fell in love with a doctor and the doctor just rebuffed her. You know, he just, he rejected her. Yeah. And she became so sad and lonely that she ended up killing herself. But the drive to be a nurse was so strong. Still wanted to help people. That yeah. even as a spirit, she went around helping people. Okay. And there are even, some of the, some of the reports, um, people say that they kind of saw a glow or felt a warm glow about her when she showed up. Some people say that she walked in. Other people say that she floated in. Mm-hmm. But everyone agrees that no one could hear her footsteps. So you can't hear... Okay. You could see her come in, but the first tip-off that there's her. something odd is that you don't hear her. Yeah. So even if you see her walking in, you don't hear the footsteps or anything. So do some people... 
see her as a little ghostly or do most people see her as like human does she look mostly human um and so that's why they think it's just some nurse who came in to she's supposed to be them? a pretty solid figure okay besides like maybe sometimes they see a warm glow behind her yeah but other than that she's supposed to be a solid figure which is where the confusion comes from because right. they see this solid figure walk into the room it's not like very apparent that she's no dead. you're not like she's not translucent yeah like that's why it takes them a second they're like why is this nurse wearing such old nurse gear right. and you know like that's that's and look how perfectly ironed everything is like she's immaculate um and that's where some of the confusion comes from that's okay. why people don't immediately sometimes go la planchada you know yeah. like they go what i didn't okay um uh, i didn't i didn't know i was supposed to get a nurse right now but like it's supposed to be in the middle of the night so i assume a lot of these people are half asleep yeah and he's kind of half wake Maybe they up just assume somebody's coming in to check something yeah yeah exactly something routine as you do and they're not gonna they're not gonna like try to fully wake up every single time like a nurse comes to yeah. check on them they're probably used so, to it you know? yeah so they probably just kind of half notice while they're half asleep like that night this that's weird she looks like she's from the 50s and yeah. i didn't even hear her come in uh and then when they like the next day when they wake up they're like oh shit that was la planchada yeah um there's one other origin that i've heard that I'm less inclined to believe and it's that she was a terrible and cruel nurse in mm -hmm. life and after she died she was the, her her way of atonement as a ghost is to go around healing people and be the opposite of what she was at death yeah usually but, if people don't change in life they're not going to change yeah so I feel like it's probably be, like dying has the opposite effect it doesn't yeah, I, yeah. no like that's why you know Ma like malevolent people turn into malevolent experience with yeah. most hauntings so I'm more inclined to believe that she was like a very serious career nurse yeah. and that was so ingrained to who she or was so important to her that that's why yeah. she's this ghostly entity that goes around healing people right which is nice finally a well, nice and ghost. if she killed herself maybe she feels like it, she that's her unfinished business is that she wasn't done being that nurse yeah she's she like, like she i wasn't still done helping people i still had so many lives to save if i gotta finish what i'm doing yeah um and that brings me to my last one, my last uh, kind of Mexican story that I want to talk about. This one actually is a place. Okay. All right. Um, and it is a place you can go visit and you can see, you know, some kind of physical pieces around the haunting itself. Uh, so it's called Isla de la Muñecas. Okay. And it's Island of the Dolls. Mm -hmm. All right. You can look up online. You can find pictures of this, pictures of this everywhere. Um, there was this reclusive guy who was on this like small island. Uh, his name was Barrera. Mm -hmm. And one day, uh, Barrera is walking like near the shore of the water and he sees the body of a small dead girl. Yeah. And the dead girl is holding a doll like in her, you know, in her hand. Yeah. And um, he, you know, goes to like pick up the body and like he hears crying. Mm -hmm. He hears just this constant crying and moaning and yelling and stuff, and she's clearly dead. Yes, yeah, so and it's, it's not, not. It's obviously not her. Yeah, it's not like specifically coming from her. It's just kind of coming from around. Yeah. And so something kind of tells him that he has to do something about the doll mm -hmm. in order to appease the spirit. Yeah. So what he does is he takes the doll and he hangs the doll up in a tree. I've heard of this. Yeah, as like a and. Um, as like a way to appease the spirit I guess yeah. like I don't know why it's yeah. this one's very odd like maybe it was this girl was so carried her doll around everywhere yeah. maybe she was so worried about her doll she was like you have to do something about my doll my doll's like gonna you can't just leave it don't on let the it just get lost in the yeah don't let it get lost here so he hung it up on a tree mm -hmm. um, to keep it safe I guess and now there are a lot of dolls hanging from trees in that area, right? Exactly, yeah. because a lot of people, um, a lot of people started following his tradition. Yeah. And whenever children would die, they, they would, would hang a doll they would go hang up at one of yeah. like one of their dolls or stuffed animals or something, up in the tree. And so now there are thousands of dolls hanging from yeah. all of these trees on this island. I've seen pictures of this. It's pretty creepy. Yes, because it's just all different types. I mean, dolls are already creepy. Yeah, and now you're you're hanging them up. And they're hung yeah, they're being hung around these trees and some of them are broken and deteriorated and dirty and missing eyes and all of this stuff. Exactly. And you know, and supposedly it's it's also kind of a conduit for like that's how the children can come, like, visit if they want to. Yeah. So 
if you stay there during like twilight or like after sundown you can hear whispers coming from around the dolls like a bunch of whispers as yeah. you like walk through the island surround and like walk through the trees and stuff that'd be pretty creepy there's not a lot of people reporting like apparitions yeah it's just, just mostly like, like voices right. whispers giggling laughing that kind of stuff so it doesn't really it seems like there's only crying if like there's a doll that needs to be hung up yeah but if otherwise like all's good hmm. everything's okay yeah, that one's interesting. I, yeah, I remember seeing pictures of it, but not knowing the full backstory. Oh, you, I like, I absolutely recommend to anyone interested in any hauntings or ghost stories at all to look up pictures of oh, yeah. the, is, uh, the Isla de la Muñecas. Yeah. Spelled M U N E C A S. Or just look up uh, Island of the Dolls, but it's like the pictures are so cool. Yeah. They're so, they're so crazy. It kind of reminds me, even though it's not the same at all, it still kind of reminds me of the suicide forest in Japan where people go kill themselves. Oh, yeah. They hang themselves from the trees. Yeah. Um, and that's supposed to be really haunted also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you, if you, like, you know, basically, if you stay overnight, it's yeah. almost a death sentence in itself. Mm -hmm. They say, like, that's why only people who are serious about committing suicide go, go there, there and stay the night yeah. because otherwise you're going to be like you could be driven by spirits to commit suicide by the end of the night anyways yeah and some people just go hike through there and find dead bodies and it's like probably don't I don't want to go on a casual hike there maybe well no it's it's also considered disrespectful to go on a casual yeah. hike the only people that go there are people that are thinking about committing suicide mm -hmm. like going through a hard time or i saw like a vice thing on this yeah. there are a bunch of volunteers who go hike through there during the day just to talk to those people. Yeah, just talk to people. And out. it's well, not necessarily like, you know, hey, don't do it. Like, hey, you have so much to live for. Like, you know, nothing is like kind of bland as that. Mostly just like, hey, I'm just going to talk to this person as a person for a few minutes. Yeah. And then, you know. See if I can make just a little bit of a difference. A little bit of a difference, yeah. Yeah, I think now that it's well known enough that it's being, you know, more policed, I think uh, people there are looking out. Uh, for people trying to commit suicide now, right? I but think the force the cops is like are too, uh, it force is like really big though. Too. Yeah, it's, it's like there's very only so much you can dense. do. Yeah, I mean you can't. If someone really wants to get in, then there's probably a decent chance they're going to. Yeah, I mean it still happens all the time. Yeah, you know that reminds me. Um, Japan has their own version of the lady in white. That's oh yeah, of course they do. <laughs> pretty like actually they have a couple different versions, but one of the ones that I heard that I thought was super creepy, and this one's supposed to be one of those malevolent spirits that like does hurt you yeah is that there is a uh, a lady in white with like really long black hair almost like covering her face almost right right and she's crying again yeah. <laughs> she's crying but this is to draw you in so if you go to check on her when she's crying and like hey are right. you okay is everything exactly. all right when she turns around you see that the reason that all of the hair was covering her face is because her face has been mutilated yeah and like supposedly it's the spirit or ghost or whatever of something that used to be beautiful and now is not yeah because of the mutilation on the face like these like big gashes on the face right and by the way i mean you could do an entire segment just on japanese ghosts and hauntings oh yeah i mean there are some really interesting and very creepy stuff that comes out of japan yeah the other thing too is like that i've kind of heard a lot and this might just be because of uh our Western sensibilities and our big separation between ghosts and mm -hmm. demons, that there's more of a, in Japan, with those kind of stories, there's more of like a blurring between the lines. Yeah, there's like, more synchronicity. There's like spirits that are not considered like ghosts of dead people, but they're not full on demons either. Like these, they're yeah, like they're these, separate entities. They're the but, other. Right. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that was like really, you know, kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. You go on the other side of the world and they have this whole other genre. There's like an in between. It's like if uh, ghosts yeah. and ghosts and demons had a baby. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and it just made this like weird entity that's not fully evil, maybe, but also not like fully human. Just something in between. Right. But the lady in white, uh, supposedly, is um, you're supposed to not talk to her. Like she's gonna ask you if you think she's beautiful, and you're not supposed to say a word. Yeah, you're not. You just shouldn't approach at all yeah like slowly back away you maybe see any a woman in white 
who's crying or seemingly crying and upset. Maybe, I mean, I know it's awful because if it's a real person who's upset, you should just, you should help, but you should probably leave it, leave it alone and just back away. Yeah. It might be the lady in white. Well, I think we got through a pretty good amount of stuff this time, but I definitely think that we could easily do a part two. Oh, absolutely. So we're going to end it here. This has been Tweester. And Daniela. And we will see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you.